Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Finally, we are on video number three of the Chevy 2.2 liter Ecotec rebuild. We're gonna be assembling everything together. We'll have a bunch of torque specs and how to get the pistons back in and rings on and all that good stuff. So follow along, let's get cracking. All right, so let's start on the head. Let's replace the valve seals. Now you'll probably hear me say this over and over, but we want our work surface super clean, like a surgeon's work table. So the special tool we need, let me find it, is this tool here. This one's made by Lyle. It's for getting the keepers back on the valve springs. Now this is for assembly. Disassembly, I don't use anything but a pipe. So this is just a pipe. I don't know if it's three quarter inch probably. Half inch pipe would probably work, about three or four inches long. A little longer might actually be better. And then I have a rag stuffed in it. And that's so when I hit on it, the keepers don't go popping through the tube. So now we want one end over the top of the keepers on the valve spring. Then we take our hammer and we hit on it. Before we do that, forgot to mention, you want a rag underneath. And that just puts pressure on the valve so it doesn't open up when you're hitting on the top here. So it just holds it in place so it doesn't open. It just allows it to come off a little easier. Hit it again. There we go. So we got keeper here. Another keeper already came out. Valve spring. We'll pop the valve out the bottom. There we go. Keep a rag there. Let's just set these aside. Okay, do it with the other one. Just a tap. Okay, there's one keeper. And a lot of times that's what happens. One keeper comes out before the other. There we go, the other keeper. And then we'll pop the valve out. There we go. Why I'm popping the valves out is I'm replacing these exhaust valves. All the intake valves have been pulled out and inspected. They look good. The exhaust valves are getting some pitting around it. And since we're already in here doing this rebuild, we're gonna go ahead and replace these valves. Okay, that's it. Now, as far as getting the valve seals out, they're really just set in there. They look like this. You'll see them in your kit. And they just set in there. Sometimes they get a little suction to the bottom. Most of the time they just come right out. Now, as far as putting our new ones in, Literally, they just sit right in. This big lip is the bottom of our spring. Let me get a spring. So it just sits right over like that on the bottom of our spring. So perfect. That's what holds it in place. So it's not really pressed in place. It's held in by the spring. So that's it. I already did all the others. You can do that. You can do one at a time if you want, or you can label them. If you're gonna just do them all like we did, I have them labeled. Let me show you on the bottom of it. This is says, one one, not sure if you can see that, but that's cylinder number one, valve number one, and then I have a one two, cylinder one, valve two, a two one, a two two, a three one, three two, and you can't get the exhaust and the intake mixed up because they look different. The intake is a little bigger than the exhaust. So that's it for the valve seals. Uh, just pop them in, put it back in. Let me show you that on the intake side since all those are being reused. So we're just lapping the valves real quick. You can get this lapping compound, metal grinding compound. Fine grade is what we're using. And you just put a little on the back side of the valve. Now when you pull your valves out, you wanna label them. So I label them 1112, 2122, and so forth. That way they go back where they came from. And why we're lapping them is just to break the glaze. No other reason. If you're getting new valves, you wanna lap them just so the face of the aluminum and the face of this just kinda mesh together. But the main purpose is to break the glaze. So once you have the compound applied, you just set it in its little spot where it's supposed to go. And then they have a lapping tool like this, just has a suction cup on one side wood here and you lap it by hand. We're gonna do it a little quicker. I just drill the hole in the back of it, put a screw in it so I can attach it to my drill. Again, just breaking that glaze. And then you pop them back out and you wanna clean it off real good. Both the valves and the seats here. That compound off. Put a little brake clean or whatever down it if you want. 
Spray it off, find just a wipe is good enough. Whatever you wanna do, never be too clean, that's for sure. Again, this is something you can have the machine shop do. They can reface your valves, put a nice fresh surface on here and here. If you want them to, they can rebuild the whole head that way. Now that you got it all wiped off, I like putting just a little bit of lube on it, on the stem here, wipe it around, and it'll go right back in its hole. All right, and you can do that with all of them. All right, so now you have all the valve seals complete. I'm gonna show you how to put the springs back on. Again, it takes a special tool. Now there are two tools. There's this one and this one, and if you notice, they're different size heads. So for this engine, you want the smaller size head. You can buy them separately or you can buy them in a kit. Either way, let me grab the valve spring and keeper. Now all these springs are the same size, so you don't have to worry about keeping the exhaust with the exhaust or intake with the intake. Now we wanna take a rag, wad it up, and then stick it under the valve. There we go. Okay, I might have to reposition the camera. I'm gonna raise you just a little. Okay, what that does is prevents the valve from falling back in, so it keeps it nice and taut. And you can just push on to make sure they're nice and solid. Take our springs, set them on top. Set them on top, take the caps off. Now with a cap, just put one keeper in. So that's all you want, one keeper and then put that on the bottom right there. So closest that way. We're just gonna do one keeper at a time. That's what I found to be most productive. So then we take our cap. Now these usually, if you come with a kit, it comes with its own handle. I don't have the handle, so that's why I use this. A rag on the butt to protect your wrist or your palm of your hand. And we're just gonna put this piece right here right in the center. Like that and give it a good push. Oh, okay, so that didn't work. No problem. Try it again. So one keeper in the cap, just like that. It may take a few times. No problem, patience. Okay, there's one keeper in. Now we'll take the other keeper, put it on the other side, and it'll just rest on top of the cap. If you can see that, just on top of the cap. And we'll take our tool, do it again, put it right in the center. And we'll push down. And there it is. Both keepers are in. We'll do that to the other side. Don't lose your keepers. Jeepers, keepers, where did I put them? Oh, they're underneath, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so just one keeper. Put it towards the bottom. Push down. Okay, that didn't work. Now typically what we'll do is put this on and then hit it with a hammer and that sets them in. Usually you'll put two keepers at the same time, but for some reason on this bad boy, I was having trouble with that method. So that's why I'm doing this method. Okay, that keeper's in. Let's top one on, same thing. Okay, not quite. So if you can see, it's almost in, but it's still pushed up, raised a little. So now I'll go ahead and use the hammer because they're both almost all the way in. Hopefully this will just reseat them in the rest of the way. There we go, that's it. So if you don't want this headache, you don't wanna worry about the tediousness of it, go ahead and have the machine shop do this. Uh, the tool itself, if you just buy the one, it's about 20 to $30. If you buy the kit, it's a little more expensive. So kind of, you know, price it out if you want the machine shop to do it because the price isn't too much more, then I definitely recommend it. All right, well, I'm gonna do this side and then we'll go and throw our cams back on. Okay, now that we got all the springs back in, we're gonna put the cams in. We want all our little slots to be cleaned out 100%. Before we put our cams in, we're gonna put in our rocker arms, grab those. Now I took these off all in a particular order, so they're gonna go back in a particular order. Now just to keep things clean, we're just gonna wipe everything off. Now on all of our valve stem tips, we're gonna put a little bit of oil. So on all of them, just a good amount of oil. Do the same with our lifters, just on the tips of them, so they're not dry. And we'll just put these in, they only go on one way. Wipe everything off. And they're already cleaned, we just double wiping. Once all our rockers are in, we'll go ahead and just put a little oil on top of our drum, our rollers. Do that, maybe squirt some in the bearings a little. 
You can even soak these overnight if you wanted, but this should be good enough. All right, good. Now putting the cams on, you can use this assembly lube, that's what I'm gonna use, or continue using just your oil here. Again, that's gear oil, so it is a little thicker than regular oil, which should be plenty. But what we're gonna do is take our assembly lube. Stuff is incredibly thick. And we're just gonna put it right in there. We're gonna do this on every single one. And you can either do it on this or do it on the cam. Either one, it doesn't matter. But this stuff is so thick. It doesn't take a lot. Because when you put the cam on, it'll kind of squish it out too. Yeah, it's like a big snot. And then again, our cams, just make sure those are good and clean. Our lobes and everything, nice and clean. Now, if you need new cams, price them out because I priced them out and you're better off getting a whole new head than you are just purchasing one cam. So these cams are good, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, and make sure all your rockers are just in where they're supposed to be, nice and tight. Okay, now I'll do our caps. Now, same thing on our caps. I'm just gonna put that assembly lube. And you know, you don't even need to. It'd probably be easier just to put it straight on the top of the, the cam here. Probably be easier. You can even put it on the lobes a little if you want. Get it all over the place. Just make it a big lube party. Okay, let's do that with the other cam real quick. All right. So now we can put our caps on. Again, make sure they're nice and clean underneath. And just snug them up. Now these are torqued to 89 inch pounds. I don't see a particular pattern. All right, perfect. Our head is done for now. We'll switch over and do the block. Got the block all set up and ready to install the pistons. First thing we wanna do is get a nice, fresh, clean rag and clean out our cylinders. Even though it was at the machine shop, there could still be just a little bit of grit left from the honing. So go ahead and just clean out the cylinders best we can. Now we have new connecting rods, new pistons. So we need to install them together. Really easy. You should have new clips. We'll set those aside. And right inside is our wrist pin. You just wanna push that out. Let's see if we can. Okay, let's try the other direction. There we go. Took a little bit of uh, effort. It's a nice tight fit. You know, we can even use something to kind of push against. There we go. Okay, so we want to get this out. And then what I'm going to do is just re-lube up where it was. In there, right there. Nice and lubed. We'll even lube up uh, the wrist pin itself. Get it all lubed, lubed. Okay. And then also the inside of here, where the wrist pin is gonna slide in, just get it all nice and lubed. And then we'll put this on, and you wanna just slide it in. Push this back in. Ugh. That should fit right over, perfect. Push it all the way through. That's it, okay. Now you'll see little channels in here. We just wanna get our little circlip, put it in the channel. Having a, just a pair of needle nose works just fine. Pop it in till it snaps. Nice. Then we'll flip it over, push it the rest of the way in till it bottoms out. And we'll just put on another clip. Push it in till it snaps. That's it. So that's easy, super easy. Now let's install our piston rings and get them in. Before we forget, next thing we wanna do is oil up the cylinder. So just get some oil, doesn't matter, just motor oil. Get that cylinder walls nice and lubed up. Then, where did I put my piston? Now we're gonna install the rings. There's an arrow that points it to the front of the engine. So what I like to do is just draw a line like that, and then a line like this, making four quadrants. Then a line like that and a line like that. The first ring goes here, the second ring goes here, third goes here, fourth, fifth. I may have these two backwards. It might be one and two, but either way, that's how we spread it out. Cause you don't want the ring ends, the gaps to line up with each other. You want them staggered. So that's important. So the first at the bottom is our oil ring that consists of three separate rings comprising one uh, composite ring, the oil ring. So we want to put this on first, double check. 
Yeah, so it is. Where I marked two, that's actually one. So the first one goes right there. And you want that in gap right where I marked. And we're going to make this go past. So past the groove onto the skirt, just like that. Next, we have our wavy oil ring. That goes on, and we're going to put that in the groove. And that goes where the, right here, where I have the number one. That's actually supposed to be number two. We want that in gap to match right there. And on these little wavy rings, we want to make sure that they, uh, the ends touch each other and not overlap. So that's important as well. Get a little pick, that helps you out. Okay, now we'll bring our bottom ring back up to fit underneath that wavy ring into its groove, just like that. And now it's underneath, and we'll get our last oil ring, and that goes on top, and it goes right here in the center. There, perfect. Now our, our wavy ring got off just a little. It's overlapping, so we just take a pick and make sure that those ends line up with each other. There we go. And then we'll just double check that our caps line up where they should be. That looks good, bottom looks good. Okay, perfect. So now we have our compression ring and it should have a top or a stamp on it that shows which direction that it points up. Not that this is the top ring, but that that's the top of this ring. So we'll put that on. It goes right here on number four. There we go. And you'll know these two compression rings are different. When you get your ring kit, they'll explain which one is the top top, which one goes in the second groove. But the one that's a little more rounded is the very top first groove. And the one that's more sharp edged, that's the second ring. But again, just follow the directions that came with your ring kit. And then this one goes right there, number five. Put that all the way around. And that's it. So the rings are on, in position. Now we'll get some oil. Wanna oil up our skirt, oil up all the grooves. Now you could pre-oil the grooves, but it just makes it a little slippier putting stuff on. But either way is fine. Just rub this around. I'll just double check that everything is where it should be. Now we'll take our ring compressor slash installer tool, tighten her up. Perfect. Okay, that's as tight as it'll get. Now there is an arrow, again, on top of your piston. You want to make sure that that points forward or to the front of your engine. And then we want to just also make sure that this is perfectly flush. Then you can take a rubber mallet or the back of a hammer and you just want to knock it in. Make sure everything's lined up, looks good. Perfect, and we're in. Now if for some reason it doesn't go in and you feel it kind of stick, don't keep pounding on it. Pop the piston back out, recompress the rings, try it again. It should go in nice and smooth. Okay, now let's flip it over, put in our bearings. All right, we got the block flipped over. Now we're gonna install our bearings. We got the caps off. We wanna make sure that we label them or somehow know that each cap goes to a specific rod. So you don't wanna get them uh, mixed up. They're not interchangeable. Now putting the bearings in, they're super easy. There's not a top or a bottom. Now there are when it comes to the crankshaft, but for these rods, you can use either one. And there's a groove on the rod and a little protrusion on the bearing. So you just line up the protrusion with the groove and push it in. Now I'm right all in your way, but that's okay. You just push it on just like that and it's in. Now for the cap, you do the same thing. There's a groove, protrusion, and get this bolt out. And then you just push it down as far as it'll go, just like that. Now this cap is ready to go back on. The grooves go to the grooves. Well, we won't put the caps on because we gotta put the crank on first. So let me go ahead, I'll put all the bearings on the caps and then we'll lay the crank in. So now for our main bearing, super thick. We want the hold bearings to be on the block. The ones without will go on the case. And then same thing, protrusion here, groove here, line it up. Press down as much as you can. Now our thrust bearing goes here. So the second one in, same thing, it'll have the oil ports. That should fit right in. Just give it a little tap to center it up. All right. 
They don't take a lot of force to go in. They go in pretty easy. Okay, so those are in. Now we want assembly lube right here. I'm just gonna lube this up really good. Even on our connecting rods, we'll get those good and lubed up. It doesn't take a whole lot because as we tighten things up, it'll get squished around because these tolerances are super tight. We'll get our crankshaft. Now just like everything we've been doing, we'll make sure it's clean before we set it in. Just wipe it down really good. Get our journals and everything. Now, if you need a new crankshaft for whatever reason, you have to be careful of what year you get. Some will say an 06 works in an 08, but it does not. And it all has to do with the tone ring for your crank position sensor. So this tone ring is this style. Other crankshafts had a different style. So make sure that what you pull out of yours is the correct one based on this tone ring. Nice. So now we can at least get these on. I'm trying to pull the piston up. Maybe we can get a screw on it. Pull it up. There we go. So there's one ready for its cap. So now again, let's lube this side up really good before we put the cap on. All right. Let me get a torque spec on these. For our connecting rod bolts, they are 18 foot pounds plus an additional 100 degrees. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna wipe off the bolt tops with just a little brake clean. Now let's get our 18. I'm gonna go through all of them with the 18. All right, now how we're gonna get our 100 degrees. I'm gonna mark each bolt straight ahead of me. Now 100 degrees is just a smidge past 90. So now I'm gonna turn each bolt 90 degrees plus just a little extra. And this dot will tell me where I've reached what I wanna reach. A little more. Just a smidge more. Feels good. It's nice when you have a helper holding the block. Looks good, just double check. If any of them you feel could go just a little further, it's okay, make it go a little further. So now let's put our crank case on. That will have its own bearings for the main bearings for our crank. Let me find that and get it ready. So same thing on this. This is the front, this is the rear. We're just pressing in our bearings. Protrusion, groove. That's pretty much it. Let's push it in. Tap it if we need to. The second one is our thrust bearing. All right, let's get it good and lubed up. And right, now we'll set this aside for now. We have some RTV to, to lay on this. So it looks like it can use just a little more scraping. This will scrape to the outside so nothing falls in. Now it's okay to use a metal scraper on this because RTV will fill in any imperfections. If you accidentally gouge it, that's okay. Now, if we were using like a rubber gasket, then we wouldn't use a metal scraper. Just getting as much of this stuff off as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, now we'll take a clean rag, get some brake clean. And wipe this surface off really good. Everywhere the RTV needs to stick, we want it nice and clean. We'll do the same thing to this surface. Anywhere the RTV needs to stick, just clean it off real good. So looking a little closer at the manual, the RTV follows this groove. So we actually want to clean out that channel as much as possible, get that nice and clean. And then again, with some brake clean, just nice and oil free. Now what we're using is Max Torque from Permatex. This is the gray stuff. Now you don't have to get such a big tube like this. They do make them in smaller tubes, um, but that's what we are using. We just want to fill up that groove and have it protrude just so much. Because again, it'll squish and fill up any imperfections. So 
almost like welding, like a nice, nice bead. I can take our other half and lay it straight on. Tap it a little to get it in the dowels. Right, we'll just get our perimeter bolts in. I want to suck it down and then let it dry for about a little while. Whatever their RTV says, that's what we want to follow. All right, we'll let that tack up for a little bit. And then we'll come back, torque it everything down. All right, sufficient time has passed. Now we'll snug our main bearing bolts down. All right, these are torqued in two phases, just like the connecting rod bolts. First, we want 15 foot pounds, then we want 70 degrees. Then the pattern starts with the outside, outside, then inside, inside, jump over, outside, outside, inside, inside, back over here, out, out, in, in, over and over. So 15 first. Okay, then we'll do the exact same way. We'll wipe off the bolts. Now 70 is just less than 90. Now they do have special tools that you can use for an angle gauge. If you feel you need one, go ahead and get one. So same pattern. So those are done. Now we'll torque our perimeter bolts. Those are 18 foot pounds and kind of the same idea. Start in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're just working from the middle out. All right, got this done. Let's see what's next. All right, so now we got our oil pan up here. We're just gonna do the same thing like we've always been doing, scrape off anything. Now the machine shop, they got most of it. So we're just getting any extra stuff. You can get this inside stuff. It really doesn't matter on this inside stuff. You just want this main top surface nice and clean. And then the exact same thing with the rag in the brake clean. You want an oil-free surface. And then we're just applying RTV around the whole perimeter. You can circle the bolts, but really as long as you're on the inside of these bolt holes, you should be fine. A lot of times people like to circle the bolt hole which is perfectly fine. So all the way around. And then also right here where this oil pickup tube port is, we wanna just put a bead around on top of that surface as well. Now on the crank case, uh, same thing. We're just cleaning off the surface and then we're wiping the surface down uh, with a rag. So same thing. I guess I'll go around each bolt too. Doesn't hurt. All right, now we flip it over. There we go. And then same thing, it has dowels it fits into. Give it just a little tap. We'll put some bolts in, snug it down just a little till it starts to squeeze out the sides. Let it set for however long your RTV says to, then we'll torque them down. So the torque on these are 18 foot pounds and then the same pattern we've been doing, starting in the middle, across, going out that way from middle to end. All right, before we forget, let's put our rear main seal in to turn the engine around. All right, so where the two case halves come together, you want just a dab of RTV, not a glob, but a dab right there, dab on this side. And then as it gets pushed in, that RTV will get spread around a little. And then we'll want to take a little bit of lubricant on the inner part of this seal, a little bit of oil or whatever you got. Spread that around. And then we're just going to tap it in until it bottoms out. Something to be watchful for while putting it in right here. We damaged the, the seal because of how it went in. This one is no longer good. That was our fault putting it in. We have a new one. We're going to go ahead and put that in now and hopefully it works out better. All right, round two, just a little dab again doesn't take a lot just some fresh stuff lube up our seal but i'm actually going to lube this up
There we go. That one was better. You'll feel it bottom out. That's it. Perfect. Much better. All right, making good progress. Now we're gonna get this off the table so we can put it back on the engine stand. Okay, let's flip this bad boy over. Perfect. Now we're gonna install the head. Let's get this surface really nice and good. All right, now if there's any uh, extra head left over from the last one, we wanna get that with a plastic scraper. We want this surface gouge free. So this is an example of a plastic scraper. We're just getting any of that old head stuff off. You saw when I pulled it off, it was pretty sticky. We're just getting it all off. It was just pretty much that side that still had a little of the material left over. Everything else looks really good. Now we're gonna blow out each of these bolt holes just to make sure that there's nothing left over from when they put it through the parts washer. Because if there's any fluid left in these holes, it'll create hydraulic pressure when we go to bolt it down and you'll get a false torque. So you wanna make sure these holes are perfectly cleaned out. So let me get my air hose and we'll blow them out real quick. I'm pretty sure they're dry, it's just a precaution. If you have a piece of copper tubing, it helps get it in the hole. And then we'll just launch some air in it. Just a little. So now we just put our head gasket on. Just double checking that it's all clean. Perfect. Let me zoom you in a little closer. So our head gasket can only go on one way. So there's a top and a bottom, but you really can't get it mixed up. Cause if you try to do it this way, it just, it doesn't work. So we wanna go ahead and do it this way, like that. Fitting over the dowels. All right, before we put our head on, we're gonna move cylinder number one at top dead center. That'll help us with our timing. And we're actually gonna put it right before top dead center. So not quite, and we can adjust this as needed later, advance it a little more. And the reason why we're doing this is once we put the head on, if we have to shift the cams, because this is an interference motor, we don't want those valves to make contact with our piston heads. So this reseeds the piston down out of the way just enough so that when we move the cams, the valves open, they won't hit our head. Okay, so I think that's good. Now again, make sure the bottom of our head is nice and clean. No little grit, debris, lint or anything. Now we can just lay it on. Now when we lay it on, we don't want it to slide on. We want it to just sit straight down as much possible. Okay, so reassess. What does it need? So if you do have to move it, you wanna lift it up to move it. There we go. Perfect, set right down. Now we want our new head bolts. Now our head bolts do need to be coated in oil, in standard engine oil, not a heavy grease or anything super thick, just standard 520, 530. I like just dipping it in. You want a light coating on the whole thing. So if it's super wet and dripping, you can uh, just kind of spread it around and get the heavy drips off. And that's it, and they're all nice and coated. So we'll just drop it in. So now we also wanna get a little oil under the heads. Just a little, just a little. That way it turns easier as we're tightening it. So for the sequence, it's 22 foot pounds for our first pass. We'll start in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So just that same pattern we've been using. I'll throw the pattern up on the screen so you can see it. 22 foot pounds. All right, now getting 155 degrees is gonna be a little tricky. You either need a dial indicator to let you know how many degrees you went, or we can do our best guess with some math. We're gonna do the tick mark, just like we did on all the other bolts. We're gonna estimate where 155 degrees is. We know how to get 90, we know how to get 180, so we're gonna divide those two in half. That'll be a 45 off of those, and then in half again. So 90, and then halfway between 90 and 180 is 135, and then halfway between 135 and 180, we'll get us pretty close to 155. 
And again, same sequence of tightening. All right, it's gonna take a lot of muscles. Okay. All right, I think that's it. They all look good. Now we wanna put in our front small bolts. Again, those will be lubed before dropping them in. I don't know if I mentioned that special socket for these front ones. It's an E12, so it's an inverted Torx E12. You might also be able to get it with just a standard socket. Let me see what size that is. A 10 millimeter may be able to get it. 3 8 would probably actually fit a little better. Yeah, nine is too small. But an E12 is gonna give you the best fit. And these are torqued to 26 foot-pounds. And it doesn't look like there's any particular pattern. All right, our head is on, sweet. Now we'll put our water pump on on this side and start doing our timing. All right, new water pump, new gasket. I'll throw that on. Now this one, long one here in the front, that goes through the timing cover, so we won't put that on. But we got these shorter ones here. There was a long one in the front right here. Okay, we can at least suck those two down. I guess this one here is on this side. So there's only one bolt that goes through the timing cover right here. So you do are able to get the three. All right, 18 foot pounds on these bad boys. All right, and even though it's a new pump, just make sure that your drain plug is tight as well. Okay, so the cam sprockets are exactly the same. It doesn't matter which one goes on which side. And the first thing we're gonna do is just move the cams in the position they need to be in or close to it. There's an INT and an EXH. This is the intake side. We want that INT to be about a 45 degree angle. And then same with the EXH on this side, we want it to be about a 45 degree angle. So let's see how our cams look. Now it should only go on one way. It's keyed kind of specifically. Okay, that looks good. Let's see if we can 180 it, because I don't think it will fit 180. No, it doesn't go on 180. Okay, so go back. I just wanted to double check. So good, so right there, INT. So we actually don't have to move this cam at all, which is pretty sweet. So let's see if the EXH is where it needs to be. Oh, and it is. So when we put our cams back on, they just kind of fell right into place where they needed to be. So that's actually pretty nice. So it can only go on one way, which makes sense. Okay, well let's take these off because we don't need them yet. We were just checking to make sure that our cams were rotated in the right position. So now that we know that these are rotated in the right position, we'll put our crank in the right position because remember our top dead center we were just before. So we want this keyway to be 90 degrees straight up. So let's put this back on and turn it just enough right about there okay so let's put our sprockets on down here so first we want our big gear on and there's a front and nothing on the back so we, the front goes facing out there we go and then this one has a dimple on it the other side no dimple so we want the dimple pointing out and those are our timing marks Perfect. So I just wanted to point this out. The balance shaft sprockets go here and here, but from the machine shop, they got recessed in. You can see how they move like that. You can pull it out like that. So this one's protruding. This one's recessed. It got stuck recessed just from being in the parts washer and stuff like that. So you could put your bolt in it and you want to pry it out. You might need to get something like a screwdriver. If you get this as a pivoting point and then your screwdriver underneath it, you should be able to pop it out. There we go. There, just like that. So now we're back out. So that's just a tip. If these are recessed in from the machine shop, we want to go ahead, pull them out, and now we're good to go. We can go ahead and put these sprockets on. There's a green INT intake. That goes, of course, on the intake side. Put that bolt in. 
And then we have a white exhaust. We'll put that one on. Because these are gonna spin on us, we can't torque them now. We have to put the chain on first. So let's go ahead and put our upper chain guide on. All right, now we're gonna torque everything last. So just get it all nice and snug. So now we have our chain, two of the same colored links, and then one unique colored link. We want the unique colored link to be here on the intake side. So we'll move this around and put it right there on that tooth. Okay, bring this around. So it goes under and then over. Okay, just for now, we'll leave it like that. So now we're gonna work clockwise. So we have this one right here where it needs to be. Now our second colored link, or our next one, needs to be on the dot on our big back gear here in the front. Okay, I'm just gonna put my finger on it like that. Now we're gonna take up this slack right here. Let's go ahead and take up that slack. Okay, perfect. So now slack is taken up. Now we'll come around. Now on the water pump, it does not matter how that lays. All right, and it actually may help to pull one of these bolts out. They had us put that on first, but it might be easier to just have it off for now. Okay, and that could just settle. Oop. Because we also want this one here to line up with the last colored link. So the gold one on this side, or the uniquely colored one, the next dot here, this comes around like that. So we're lined up there. And then on the water pump, it doesn't matter. So it seems like I even take that off. So I don't know why the manual had me put that on first. That doesn't make sense. So we'll take it off just so we can get this up and over. I think we're almost there. Maybe I'll put it on the water pump first. So let me pull this slack off. Come on, buddy. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it off of this one like that. Make sure the bottom one is back where it needs to go. Okay, right there. Tighten this up like that. I'm gonna put it on the water pump because the water pump doesn't matter. There we go. And now let's put it on this last one here. There we go. Okay, so that's what you gotta do. You gotta put it over the water pump before putting it over this one. Just double check, colored, colored, and colored. Now let's put the guide on. Drop my bolt. All right, now you should be able to pull the pin on your tensioner and let's get some torque specs. So our top chain guide bolts are 133 inch pounds. Everything else is 89 inch pounds. Once those are tight, then we'll get our last one here. So we're gonna put our crank pulley bolt back in, snug that up. So I wanna hold the crank. These are 37 foot pounds. Okay, there's one. There's two. Okay, our balance shaft timing is in. Now we'll put on our main timing. All right, so again, we have three links, two the same color, one unique. The unique goes on the intake timing mark. So you wanna put the timing chain through the top. You wanna make sure the timing chain goes on both sides of the block boss. You'll see it in there, it's like a, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little blockage here. You want it to go on both sides of that. There we go. This takes a little finesse. Okay, this will go around the crank bolt. So the colored link, I don't know where I put it. Okay, the unique one here. So now we'll put our intake cam on, or the cam sprocket on, so it lines up. That'll go on like that, perfect. I'll just finger tighten this. Okay, we'll leave that for now. Now we'll put our long chain guide through the top. The bolt hole goes down. It's right through the top like that. And it gets bolted right there. All right, again, we'll do all the torquing last. All right, so now we'll get our other cam on. So we wanna make sure this link also lines up with that mark. 
So what we might have to do actually is just tighten up the crank a little, turn it clockwise to get that slack out of the chain. There we go. So now we'll go up with this side, make sure that lines up still. So we'll get our exhaust. The EXH goes on that other color. Perfect. Now we might have to move the exhaust cam just a little. So let me grab something to do that with. So we're just gonna move this till it lines up. There we go, perfect. Now we'll put our bolt in there. And then last, we wanna put this on here. It goes up through there, and then right in here. May help to have a magnet if you need. Our guide bolts are 89 inch pounds. We had three of those. So this cap bolt, we wanna put just a little RTV on the threads. All right, now this is a whopping 59 foot pounds. We don't wanna forget our upper guide. Those also are 89 inch pounds. So before we could torque these, we have to put our tensioner in. Let's get a torque on that. That is 55 foot pounds with a 32 millimeter socket. All right, now these are 63 foot pounds plus 30 degrees. Make sure our timing marks are still in the right spot. Good. Now 30 degrees. So you got our 90 would be here, 45 would be here. So just a little less than 45 will be 30. Our timing is set and done. We're ready for our timing cover and our valve cover to go back on. Let's take a quick water break and when we come back, we'll start doing this. So if you took your front cover to the machine shop to get it all washed down, what we wanna do is pull our pump off. This is the oil pump housing right here. It's a T20 Torx. This cover should come right off, perfect. We're gonna pull this off and we're just gonna clean it out really good just in case there's any of that parts washer stuff still in here. We just wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Wipe it out, just some brake clean or whatever you have. All right, so we're gonna take some of our lube and just lube this up real good here. Let's get that surface all nice and lubed up. Mostly just where that pump is gonna be running across. And then same with the pump, this outer piece. We're just gonna get it all nice and lubed on both sides of it. That can go in like that. Okay, even move it around if you want to. Then our inner piece. And also get some lube on it. Let's go ahead and lube these teeth as well. Getting it all nice and greased up. There, perfect. Now we'll throw our cover back on. Let's see, it only goes one way. And there's no gasket, it's just a metal seal. So metal on metal, no gasket, RTV, or anything's required. And I don't have a torque spec for these, so you just have to use your judgment. Kind of how did they feel coming off, you know, good and snug is all they need to be. So now what we want to do is get our front seal out. Now you can get a screwdriver from this backside and pop it out from this direction, out this way. Or, let me see if I got it here. Found it, you can take a big screwdriver from this end and just pop that seal off just like that. Now we wanna take our new seal. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of lubricant on the outside of it. Doesn't take a lot just to help it go in. I'm just gonna tap that in. You could probably even just press it in with your fingers. These usually aren't in very tight. You just press it in until it bottoms out. Yeah, see my fingers is all it needed. I'm gonna throw a little lubricant on the inside here as well for when it slips over that crankshaft. All right, front cover is good to go on. Let me pull you around to the block and there's a place we need to put our TV. So we're gonna take our scraper and scrape right here where the two case halves come together. We just wanna get that nice and clean the best we can. Plastic scraper is the best for this. Getting it from different angles is helpful. Now it doesn't have to come all the way off, just get the bulk of it. Take some brake clean with a rag, clean that off. We can actually just clean the whole surface off so we get a nice clean mating surface. 
We're gonna throw a dab right here where the case halves come together. Nice, good dime size, maybe a little smaller than a dime, just right there. When the gasket goes on, that'll squish out. All right, our gasket should only go on one way. There's dowels on the sides that'll help it stay in place, just like that. Wanna make sure this surface is nice and clean, and then it's ready to go on. And there we go. The dowels also line up perfectly. Let me start putting our bolts in. This long bolt here is for our water pump. So just like all the RTV, we want to suck it all down until it starts to squish out. Follow directions on your RTV bottle, and then we'll torque these down. Our belt tensioner is 33 foot-pounds. I'm going to leave the crank pulley off just to give us that little extra room while putting the engine back in. So that buttons up our front. Before we put our valve cover on, I'm going to just spritz these lobes one more time, just each one. All right, the new valve cover gasket just fits right in its groove, only goes on one way. Same with our spark plug well gaskets. Tip it upside down. Now sometimes when you tip it upside down, the gasket wants to fall out, so just make sure it's pressed in nice and good. Put it on, perfect. We'll just finger tighten these. All right, just like everything else, the tightening sequence is in the middle to the out. So we'll go ahead and get those torqued down. So this is the exhaust side. We'll start with our exhaust gasket. Let's see, it only goes on one way. Now, if you have the air injection or what some call the smog pump, it takes a special gasket. So make sure you have the right gasket. This is also called PZEV, partially zero emission vehicle. Now we'll go ahead and throw on our manifold. Make sure the surface is nice and clean. Before we do that, actually, let's put on our water pump stuff. So this water pipe separates into two pieces. You wanna pull it apart, put a new O-ring on the inside, a little bit of lubricant, help it slide back in like that. And then an O-ring on this side, same thing, help it slide in and then a new gasket here. And these are 89 inch pounds. Now the coolant temp sensor, wanna throw just a little RTV on the threads. Doesn't take a lot, just a little. Coat the threads. And this is torqued down to 15 foot pounds. And then we can put our manifold on. Before we throw the bolts on, we're gonna put just a smidge of anti-seize on each stud. Doesn't take a lot, just something to help. And these are torqued to 10 foot pounds. And again, starting in the middle, working your way to the outsides. Then we can put our heat shield on. We can only put one bolt in up here, this bolt, goes through uh, this little EGR valve. So we'll put our gasket on, put our long bolts through, and this one up here goes through both of them. And then this last one down here. As far as I can tell, these are 18 foot pounds. And this is different torque. I don't have the torque on this heat shield. Well, I guess this is 18 foot pounds too, or 17 according to the manual. So we'll get it close there. There we go. And this is the nut for our pipe that goes here, just for the bracket. We'll put that on so we have our eyes on it. So I think that buttons up this side. So now let's flip the engine over and do the intake. Sweet, sweet, making progress. Now we got our intake side. I'm gonna put the oil filter in first. Just find where I put the cap. I'm gonna put just a little oil on the tip of this thing, just on that little O-ring. We got our new seal, little O-ring, put that on. Perfect, we'll get some lube on that. Put our filter in. Then we got three sensors to put in. Our crank position sensor. Just get it all wiped off. Here's a good opportunity to replace these if you want. I recommend going OEM though if you do. I'll put a little lube on this O-ring first. Now in your rebuild kit, they do give you new O-rings. So if you need them, go ahead, pop them out, put in a new one. The most important torque out of these three sensors is the NOx sensor. If we over torque it, we can damage the sensor. 18 foot-pounds. Now our oil pressure switch was leaking, so we're putting in a brand new one. Comes with a copper washer, and that is 19 foot-pounds. Our kit came with new intake manifold gaskets. Went ahead and put those on, and then also cleaned out the throttle body really well. Now's a good opportunity to do that. We'll set this on. You have to tilt it just a little. There we go. And these are all 89 inch pounds. Our fuel rail, the injectors got new O-rings on the tips. We did not pull the injectors out, so I didn't put new O-rings up here, but if you wanna do that, you just pop it out, put in that little tiny seal, put it back in. 
What I like to do with these before inserting it in is just take a little bit of silicone paste and put it on these O-rings so it slides right in really nice and then we don't have a issue ripping a ring or anything like that. So we just do that to all of them before putting them in. And now we can just pop them in. There we go. And these also are torqued to 89 inch pounds. We'll plug in our map sensor. There we go. It looks like just our filler tube is next. So got new O-rings on this and for the same thing, just put a little silicone paste or dielectric grease. Slide that back in. Perfect. And we can just bolt it up a few threads. All right, let's give it a good look over. Oh, we got our cam position sensor. Okay, is that it? I believe so. Sweet. Let's give it one more look over. Looking good. So I noticed on our water pump, we have this little bracket we want to pull off. So we'll make sure that we transfer this over to the new one. Now let's launch our spark plugs in. And these are torqued to 15 foot pounds. Click. I think we're ready for installation. We'll pull this off, set it on the ground, and then we'll put our flywheel on, torque that down and then we're ready to drop it in. Oh no, my battery died, so I forget where I was. The flywheel's on, there's a little keyhole here, so the flywheel can only go on in one direction. So we'll snug these down. You wanna have the crank held on the other side while we torque them. And the manual doesn't say anything about Loctite on the bolts. Some people like to Loctite their flywheels, so I'll leave that up to you. The torque spec is 39 foot-pounds, plus an additional 25 degrees. The manual doesn't mention a tightening pattern. It just says evenly. So I'm gonna do these three like a triangle and then straight across these three like a triangle. Okay, now we'll get our 25 degrees. Same method as we always use. We're just gonna mark them. I'm gonna mark them straight up. And 25 degrees is just past half of a 45. Flywheel is on. We are now ready to put it back in the vehicle. Now that was fun. Putting the engine back together, all its little pieces. Feels good, we're ready to put it in the vehicle. So this ends video number three in this rebuild. In the next video, we'll be slapping it in, starting it up for the first time, going through a few procedures in the initial break-in. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, see you on the next one.